Hey guys, Aiden here, and welcome back to another end of year review for 2022. It sounds like I'm whispering, speaking quiet in this video, that's because I just don't want to disturb others. For those of you like my friends who are watching back at home from Hong Kong or elsewhere, hey, I hope you're doing well. I miss seeing you all, and I really wish I could have come back for Christmas. Unfortunately, I couldn't really do that this year. For any of my friends that are here in Canada, and those friends that have made through Waterloo and have stumbled upon my channel, Hope you've had a nice Christmas, and before the co-op and study term and things will pick up again for us. Regardless, I hope all of you have been staying safe inside from the winter storm and from COVID alike, among other things. I just can't believe that another year has passed, 2022. This year has been unique in its own ways. COVID has just been running rampant with Omicron around the world, but at the same time, the world just slowly learns to move on and adapt to living with the virus. Bivalent vaccines have already exist, I already got my fourth dose, and of course you should make sure that you keep staying safe and being able to pay attention to public health protocols in some form or another. Back at home in Hong Kong and in China, COVID restrictions have been removed, so it is a step in the right direction towards normalcy after three long years since end of 2019, beginning of 2020. Honestly, I find the response back at home to be much better compared to many other countries. Sure, there's, there were flaws. It was far from perfect, but it was still on the strongest side, surprisingly. Next up, politics all around the world is in turmoil. I don't usually talk about politics on my channel. I don't want to in much detail, but this is a year of reflection, so it's fair that I do quickly touch on it. We've seen all the news about the tragic war between Russia and, Russia and Ukraine. It is painful to watch, and regardless of the side you do take in this, we need to agree that war in conflict is something we do need to avoid because at the end of the day, it is civilians and the people that suffer. You see protests all over the world, China with their COVID restrictions, Russia in regard, regard to this conflict, Iran with the, with, re, with the recent events unfolding there, around the world as well, climate marches, there's a lot to see. We remember the record-breaking heat waves, droughts, extreme climate phenomena, especially like flooding in Pakistan, for example, the tsunami that affected Tonga. It really was a bit of a brutal year for that. And granted, even the snow season here in Canada, from what I've been told, has been really cut short. And this year, and this year's snow for December has been quite minimal compared to the previous years. Now, I can't say anything for sure from experience because this is only my first, this is my fourth month here, so I can't really say that much. But from what the people here tell me, it is affecting them really hard. I never, I never expected the queen to pass away this year. Although, I did see it coming because she was already old and su suffering from some health issues. But then just to see it happen all of a sudden was, it felt really weird. Because she's been the queen since 1952 if I recall correctly. So she's had a lot of influence in the world and she's noticed all sorts of change that's happened throughout the past 70 years of her reign. You know, Technoblade passed away from cancer. It's really unfortunate because when I start... When I first started watching Technoblade, that was probably, I think, 2016, 2017. Around the same time, I became a, more of a Sky Wars, Bed Wars tryhard, as you remember from the early days of my channel back then, if you if you were, if you you were stuck around until then. I doubt you have, though, but I was a Sky Wars and Bed Wars tryhard back then, and he, he was the main reason for that. I do have so many nice memories of being on Bed Wars, Sky Wars, on Sky Realms working on redstone and command blocks on minecraft i still enjoy minecraft to this day i just haven't played it very often but it does bring back all those memories and i really ch do cherish them now let's talk about how 2022 has been for me well i graduated high school in may well technically may june because may was when my exams finished for because uh, i did i you know i did the ib my videos on my channel if you do want to see that for the reaction video but that's not the time for this you, you've seen how I felt about my results. I was rather mixed on them. They were not bad compared to the world average. Compared to the Hong Kong average, you know, not so much. But again, 
I mentioned all of this in my video for that. If you do, if you really are curious, you should take a look at that. And now that I've graduated high school, I'm here in Canada for university. If you haven't realized by now, I'm gonna, I'm studying electrical engineering at the University of Waterloo. Now, what I think of Waterloo so far, I quite like it actually. It's very, it's a very different environment that I've had to get, that I've got to get used to. You know, Waterloo is not exactly a big city. It's kind of like Cambridge and Oxford, where it's basically a student-oriented city. I don't know. It doesn't feel like a city to me because I'm used to the Hong Kong lifestyle where you see skyscrapers everywhere and it's, it's always really busy. It doesn't feel the same in that regard, but you know, it's a different environment. I can't compare Waterloo to Hong Kong. Sure, Hong Kong does some things much better, but Waterloo also does have its little quirks that I guess I gotta get used to. Looking at courses wise, let's quickly talk about some of Waterloo's courses. So for, so for electrical engineering in our 1A term, EC150 is our programming course. It's an introductory programming course where you learn C++. Now, I've always been a hardware person, so software has never really been my strong point, and I've never really had much proper coding experience. So I did kind, of, so I did really struggle on this, just because I was foreign to a lot of these concepts. I still did, I still passed, of course. But then, you know, was I really happy with my grade? No, not in particular. But at least I passed, and I know what I can improve on. And that means during my co-op term, I can work on some C++, develop some projects, work in some of those skills. I think it would really benefit me for the future and a lot for a lot of you as well if you're thinking of, of Waterloo for ECE. Now, next course we'll talk about is Math 115, Linear Algebra. Now, I did IB Math. So some of the concepts I've seen in IB Math, so it wasn't really foreign to me. So like vectors, complex numbers, some matrices of eigenvectors, systems of equations, but once you get into the pure area of linear algebra, so like all that numbers, theory, subspaces, bases, foreign terms that come in, it can get a bit complicated, but I, f I find it to be rather intuitive. So if you are doing linear algebra as part of your courses in Waterloo, or you're doing ECE like I am, my advice for you is to really look at the lecture notes that they give you, because the lecture notes are rather useful. And be sure to do practice questions. There's a lot on the Eng Engineering Society exam bank that you can find there. And you can also ask your peers. Be sure to ask questions to your professors. I always can't stress that enough. It's really important to be able to develop a good relation with your professor. Not only does it show that you're willing to learn and understand, but being able to have a good connection with your professors is also really good in the long run. Next course, 117, which is Calculus 1. I found, it, I found Calculus 1 to be rather easy because again, it's a lot of the stuff I've seen in IB math. So to conceptually wise, it wasn't mo too foreign to me. There was some stuff that I didn't really see, but I found it to be straightforward. And But then again, ev everyone is not me. I'm going to be different from others. So again, in terms of advice, I would pr probably say the same things when relating to linear algebra. E105 is classical mechanics, so kinematics. So the stuff that you'd see in high school physics. Now, conceptually, wasn't really foreign to me. But it was really, I found it cha slightly challenging because just because uh, you don't, when you're working on exam problems, exam problems, you don't get numbers. You only are given variables and you've solved them all parametrically in one really long form. So don't be surprised if equations you see look really ugly or really long. That is completely normal. They can also be somewhat simple as well, but you do need to be careful about that. And the best way I can to give you advice to work on this is to just do practice problems because you pro you might be using a system called Mobius for these practice problems. Th those kind of long problems, free start problems that you see on there are what going to be similar to your quizzes and some final exam kind of problems. So I really do suggest that you brush up on those and understand the concepts in depth. Otherwise, you, you, you are going to struggle. Now, in terms of my advice for incoming 1A people for ECE Waterloo, I will say, first of all, when it comes to co-op, Try not to worry too much because during the, during the first term, there's going to be people from all sorts of different environments. Some people are going to be cracked. They have a lot of projects. They have experiences working with things. They have job experiences. You may, might have that. You might not. For the first term, really try not to stress too much about it because some of it does kind of come down to luck. And you do, should be working on maintaining and adapting to the university life instead. Try to maintain a good work-life balance. So... Yes, work is important. Getting good grades, sure, it's also important. But being able just to be able to keep a consistent schedule for yourself, make sure your mental health stays somewhat stable, 
is really important and I can't stress that enough. I know it sounds very generic, but make a schedule for yourself. You will not regret it. And something I say again every year, mental health is just... And something I always say every year, mental health is something we really need to look at. Sadly, some people just disregard it. Please don't do that. Don't beat yourself up so hard. University is going to be very different from high school life. And I learned, I learned that kind of the hard way. Now, going into the new year, obviously, celebrations are much stronger this year compared to the previous years before since COVID. While well, Hong Kong, unfortunately, the fireworks are cancelled again, but I'll be celebrating with, fr with friends this year. Unfortunately, since I'm here in Canada, I've, I don't have my PC set up. I'm only on my MacBook. I won't be able to do my usual end of year live streams. So that is really unfortunate, but you know, I'm not too worried about that anymore because I have bigger things to be planning on. And regardless, I'm going to have videos coming out in 2023. As I said, the Canada Experience vlog, I'm going to be showing you some life of, of co about co-op some life in waterloo just me just exploring around canada and of course once the once my academic next and once again once my next academic term comes just the day in the average life of an ece student in the 1b term and 1b is gonna be harder than 1a usually the curve from what i see from higher students tells me 1b 2a for waterloo for ece is is usually that peak so try not to be too hard on yourself. Be sure that you can keep yourself on a stable path. Of course, I hope all of you had a good Christmas or Hanukkah or whatever you, if you celebrated recently. No live stream this year. And as we go into the new year, as always, be sure to reach out to those that you do care about, especially rekindle of your high school friends and your friends in general. Make sure they're doing well. Check up on them every often. A happy holidays to everyone who celebrates and of course we hope that 2023 can be even better stay safe and that's really all i have to say thank you for watching this video happy new year and we'll see what 2023 brings see ya one two one two three four <laughs>